Hello, my name is Dennis Thomas. Today, we're gonna to go over testing a bucket truck, digger deck truck, and bucket liner using the Bond Corporation's C1 test unit. To start off with, what mandates us to test bucket trucks is OSHA 1926.453. OSHA regulations require that you conform to ANSI A92.2 standards. ANSI standards state that you are to test your units on a periodic basis of no more than 12 month period. And any time your unit has maintenance work performed on it that may cross the insulating components of that unit that may bridge the upper boom or the lower boom. The C1 unit is very light. It's very easy to use. It takes minimal people to use it. And it is a DC unit. It runs off of 110 volts. And the C1 will build up to 100,000 volts DC to where you can test your bucket trucks, digger deck trucks, and bucket liners with it in this one unit. This is the Bond C1 main unit that consists of the transformer and capacitors that raise the voltage from 120 volts to 100,000 volts. This is a DC milliamp meter with a DC microamp meter. The milliamp meter ensures that you don't go too high on the unit to where you hurt the unit. The microamp meter is for you to have your recording so that you can follow ANSI table two. This is a ground resistive stick that allows you to ground the unit after you've used it without damaging the unit or without harming yourself. This is the high voltage DC output terminal that feeds the hot guard terminal that feeds the DC microamp meter and DC milliamp meter that feeds the test terminal, the test terminal feeds the floating terminal. The floating terminal is not connected to anything inside the unit. It is used to connect the protective output resistor that is used to protect the unit while testing in case something short circuits so that it will protect the unit from taking the surge. The, the corona ball is unscrewed and this is where all your terminations will be connected. This is the main control unit for the C1. It consists of your on-off switch, your voltage output switch will be the 30,000 volts or 100,000 volts. That corresponds to your DC kilovolt meter. Your lower scale is zero to 30,000. Your upper scale is zero to 100,000. This is your AC amp meter, which al allows you to make sure that the unit is connected properly and lets you know that you're, what amperage you're, you're drawing. This is your, your dial to dial your voltage up. And this is a ground relay light. This light is connected to a ground relay which shows you that the unit is grounded properly when the light is on. If the light is off, it is not grounded properly. This unit, if it is not grounded properly, when you turn it on, it will not operate at all unless the ground relay is closed in. And when the ground relay is closed in, then this light will also come on. It's always best the first time you use the unit, the first, first time each day. When the ground relay is on, the, turn the unit on, leave it grounded, raise the voltage slowly. 
Your amperage should increase while your voltage stays at zero. This ensures that the unit is connected properly and grounded properly. When applying your test voltage, you need to stay in constant reminder that you are watching your microamps and milliamp gauges on the red test box. Don't just run your high voltage control knob up to voltage. Keep a constant watch on your microamps and milliamps to ensure that you do not exceed your allowable microamps and milliamps when running up to test voltage. When testing the aerial devices with DC, it is not necessary to put the boom in any particular position. It will not affect the test as long as you keep the insulating section a minimum of 18 inches away from your ground conductors. When we arrive at the customer's location and they designate our test area, we barricade off the area using road cones and bright yellow chains. This is to help us keep people from walking in while we're testing and uh, accidentally coming in contact with something that may be energized. We set this up around us and we also visually guard against people coming into the, the test area. If someone does by chance come in, please just shut the machine off and um, start the test over. Always ensure that your control unit is at least 18 inches away from your high voltage box. That way that ensures if anybody points at it, then their fingers will stay at least 18 inches away from the high voltage leads. In field testing of bucket trucks and digger derrick trucks, OSHA requires that you keep a barrier between the control unit and the person controlling and the high voltage red box. There is also a second option that you can have an observer that will make sure that people stay away from the high voltage leads and high voltage box. We ground the unit from our source of current and then we ground back. We ground from the unit back to our test machine to ensure that the unit is grounded properly. The test light is on. When testing insulated booms that extend and retract. It is very important that you extend the boom to the minimum boom extension position. There should be a line on the boom that has been installed by the manufacturer to show you the minimum distance it is to be extended when performing your test. If the boom has a nylon rope on it, the nylon rope should be removed in accordance with ANSI A10.31 standards. This unit is a Digger Derrick unit. It has been insulated for 46 kV. So we will be testing this unit at 56,000 DC for three minutes. We have removed the rope as the ANSI standard calls for, and we have scoped the boom out to where the insulated arrows are. We did not go no further than what the insulated arrows call for. We have grounded the metal part of the boom, and we are gonna energize the metal part of the insulated boom and we're going to energize the hydraulic line cat track that's got the insulated hydraulic lines in them. Uh, we'll be running this test for three minutes. Uh, it cannot exceed 56 microamps. This particular unit is manufactured by Altec. Model number, serial number. It's 46 kV insulated derrick. Now we're going to take our ground off of the machine. We have our ground relay light on, which means that we are ready to proceed. And with everybody in the clear, we're going to turn our machine on and start raising our voltage. We are now at uh, 56,000 volts. Our microamps are less than 30 microamps, and we start our stopwatch. The Vaughn unit takes very little power. You can actually hook it up to a converter on your vehicle and operate the machine off of a converter, so you don't have to carry a generator with you to operate this unit. test is now run. We're grounding the unit. We've used our ground resistor stick to bleed the unit off and then we're placing our hard ground on and the unit is now grounded to where we can operate the truck. We also, we provide a sticker in the back glass of the truck. This gives you the date that it was tested, gives you the truck number, serial number, the voltage that was applied at each test, and the microamp reading of each test. Now we're going to test a bucket truck 
so that it conforms to ANSI A92.2 standards that has been mandated by OSHA 1926. Insulated aerial lift devices have three primary insulating systems. You have the upper boom insulator, the lower boom or chassis insulator, and the bucket liner. This nameplate tells us how to test this bucket truck. The information that is on it is the manufacturer, model, year it was manufactured, serial number, uh, maximum height, and uh, maximum load. What tells us how to test this is the qualification voltage is at 46 kVAC, and its insulated category is C. Trucks rated at 46 kV are tested at 56 kV for three minutes, not to exceed 56 microamps. If they are category B units rated at 46 kV, they are tested at 56 kV, not to exceed 28 microamps. If they are rated at 69 kV, they are tested at 84 kV, not to exceed 42 microamps. We are now going to test the upper boom of this bucket truck. When connecting the upper boom to the high voltage test leads, you need to ensure that you connect all metal components. When we connect the high voltage leads for the upper boom test, we connect the all metal part at the bucket. We connect to the, the mounting frame. We connect to the hydraulic lines that feed the controls and the tool circuit. We connect to the control handle. We also connect to the metal where the uh, material handling jib is. This way, the, the lineman, and the customer is ensured that all metal parts are energized. The boom is energized inside and outside. The hydraulic lines are energized. The hydraulic oil is energized, and it's all tested at one test. Every manufacturer designs their trucks differently. When you are out in the field testing these bucket trucks and digger derrick trucks, you will find several different types of mounting of the buckets and the boom tips. It is necessary for you to attach to all metal parts with your high voltage leads. We have connected the upper boom with the three-way high voltage lead. We have connected the lower boom chassis where we're going to test it with uh, our single high voltage lead and we have grounded the lower part of the boom. We're going to test the upper boom, and when we get through testing the upper boom, without moving this unit, without doing anything else, we're going to disconnect this lead and energize this next lead to test the lower chassis in just a matter of a few minutes so that the test can be run without a lot of movement of the trucks. When testing the upper boom, ensure that you ground the knuckle of the upper boom along with the truck body to the ground on the red test unit. We record the temperature and the humidity of each test as we're taking it. This provides us with more information that when our customer asks questions of why their trucks tested better last year than they did this year, uh, most of that is equated to the humidity in the air. The more humidity, the higher the test readings are going to be. Uh, the wind can affect the test readings also a, a little bit. They'll cause it to go up and down. And that's the reason why we record the humidity and temperature on each test on the trucks. The humidity is down to 16% now. Just a few minutes ago, uh, it was at 40%. So as you see, as the humidity uh, starts dropping during the day, your test results are uh, a lot better. Now we're going to test the lower boom insert without moving the truck. We're going to disconnect the upper boom lead and tie it up so that it is insulated from anything else and energize the boom of the lower chassis insulator and connect the ground to the return ground of the unit. The chassis insulator protects ground personnel in the event the knuckle comes in contact with an energized line. This test is being performed once every 12 months at 50,000 volts and not to exceed 100 microamps.
We are now going to test a bucket liner. The bucket liner is to be tested at 100,000 volts for three minutes and cannot puncture the liner. This test is mandated by OSHA and the liner is for protection of the operator's feet in case the operator sets the unit down on a grounded conductor while having an energized conductor in his control or when having a grounded conductor in his control setting the unit down on an energized conductor. In testing a bucket liner, there are two methods to test a bucket liner. You can either test it a wet method or you can test it a dry method. You can use a water vat to do this same test, keeping the water six inches on the outside and six inches on the inside, energizing the water on the inside, grounding the water on the outside. We have an aluminum uh, vat here that we have filled with water. The first thing we done was we leveled this unit up. You need to maintain your six inch arc gap inside and outside. It's basically hooked up the same way as testing any other liner. The outside is going to be grounded through this aluminum tank and through the conductive water that is around the liner. The inside is going to be energized using the Bond Corporation C1 unit with a uh, high voltage lead being placed inside the liner. Now our three minutes is up, turn the voltage down. We will now ground the unit again using our resistive stick. Once our microamp meter goes to zero, we always place our hard ground on and our resistive stick. We keep a, a metal chain tied to our ground so that we can ground the inside of the unit and it's ready to be disconnected. There's two ways to test it, a dry method. You can use the sock system or you can use the full method. Both methods are effective. It's basically a conductor on the inside of the liner and a conductor on the outside of the liner. You ground the outside conductor, as we have here, and you energize the full conductor on the inside. The uh, conductors cover the bottom and all four of the sides, inside and out. We've got our gap here for our arc gap to keep it from arcing. And uh, we are now ready to test this liner. We're gonna take our ground off. Turn our machine on, start raising our voltage. And when we reach 100,000 volts, we start our stopwatch. This test is required to run for three minutes without puncturing the liner at 100,000 volts. I'm going to turn this off, turn my switch off, then I'm going to take my resistive stick and I'm going to ground the unit. I'm going to let my microamp go to zero. Pick up my ground, and now my unit is grounded. What you need to be aware of when using the dry method is that the inside conductor will hold a charge. So we need to make sure we ground it before we reach in there and just grab it. First, we're going to ground the outside of the sock. Then we're going to connect the high voltage lead to the unit. Connect the high voltage lead to the inside sock. The sock that we are using are conductive material. We have a conductive sock on the outside and a conductive sock on the inside. The inside sock is energized at 100,000 volts and the outside sock is grounded. When testing the, using the dry method, it's just a, a dry conductor on the inside and a dry conductor on the outside. Whether using the sock method or using the full method, they basically install and remove the same way. And to conclude the bucket liner test, 
you need to ground the inner conductive material to discharge it. In testing the high resistance control handles, it is not required by ANSI at this time. If the manufacturer recommends it to be tested, and if it is recognized on the nameplate that it is equipped with a high resistance control handle, then we recommend that you test it in accordance with ANSI A92.2 standards. The high resistance upper control system is designed to eliminate a conductive path between the operator and the metal components in the boom tip. As you will see, we attach our, our connection to the control handle. This gives us a conductive piece of material to act as the operator and we connect it to our high voltage lead so that it is not touching anything else. And our ground is connected to the metal components at the bottom of the control handle. The new units have got the control handles isolated away from any other metal components. We have attached our ground lead to the bottom of the uh, control handle so that this is grounded here. We've had to remove the cover plate so that we can get to the ground. We're just coming up to 56,000 volts DC and uh, monitoring the microamp reading, which is below 30. We've started our stopwatch so that we can run it for three minutes. Now we are going to test the material handler jib on this bucket truck. This test is not mandated at this time by OSHA or ANSI standards. We are going to test it like a digger derrick truck is tested and test this upper jib at 56,000 volts for three minutes. What we've done is we've rotated the material handler jib around uh, to where we can make the test easier. We're going to ground the pin at the first pinhole position of the jib and we're going to energize the end of the jib. We have removed the material handler uh, rope, just like on the Digger Derrick trucks. Uh, their tests require that, and we, we're following that standard. In testing the material handler jibs on the bucket trucks, this is not a requirement and may not be a requirement in the near future. If you are asked to test the material handler jib, we recommend that you test it in accordance with ANSI A10.31 which is the same requirements as the Digger Derrick trucks, removing the rope and testing them at 56,000 volts. The Vaughn test unit is very light. It is easy to set up. The safety features with the ground relay make it almost impossible to operate the unit without it being connected properly and grounded properly. It uses the amp meter on the high voltage output terminals so that you're reading the current leakage of what you're testing before it gets back to the ground, which if you're testing and the unit is bad, then you know it's bad before you get the voltage up very high to where you create a problem or cause a problem. It's very simple to use and a very accurate way to test your fiberglass insulated booms and units on your bucket trucks and Digger Derrick trucks. My personal experience with all the Vaughn testing equipment is it is very easy to use, very safe to use, and very easy to instruct people on how to use it. If you're using the machine and have a problem, you can always get a hold of um, one of those at the Vaughn Corporation and they can walk you through the test procedures very easily to get you back on the right path or let you know that you have got a problem with a unit not testing properly. That concludes our demonstration of the Bond Corporation's C1 test unit while performing the test on a aerial device following ANSI A92.2 standards testing the high resistance upper control handle 
the material handler jib, the upper boom, the lower chassis insulator, and the bucket liner. Also, completing our test on a Digger Derrick truck following ANSI A10.31 standards. Thank you.